Hello, I'm Paul Weston. The sums of money involved in vaccinating the world are monumental, uh, which is like swill to a pig when it comes to corrupt politicians, uh, most of whom are out for all they can get uh, these days. And as the old saying uh, goes, follow the money, it's always instructive to take a look at the recent antics of our elite political class as they sort of snuffle around on the ground next to the overflowing coffers of uh, Big Pharma's multi-billion dollar pandemic payday. Which brings me directly to Ursula von der Leyen, uh, the immaculately coiffured president of the European Commission, who on the 1st of December um, announced the need to start serious discussions about mandatory vaccines across the entire European Union. And on the 2nd of December, Frau Merkel, uh, the somewhat less immaculately coiffure Chancellor of Germany, announced lockdowns for the unvaccinated, along with a proposed mandatory vaccine programme starting in early 2022. Now, according to the New York Times, Ursula von der Leyen was involved in the purchasing agreement for 1.8 billion Pfizer vaccines for the EU, uh, which she partly conducted by telephone and text message with Albert Boulard, the CEO of Pfizer. Now, these vaccines come in at around 14 euros a pop, so we're talking about a contract worth 25 billion euros here. That's 25,000 million euros. A huge sum of money to be negotiated by private text messages. And uh, von der Leyen was approached by a journalist from Der Spiegel about this peculiarity, uh, which hasn't got very far yet because text messages are not subject to the usual EU data collection. And even if they were, uh, von der Leyen has lost them, apparently, or the dog ate them or she left them on the school bus. You know, who cares? It's only 25,000 million euros after all. Uh, this led uh, Der Spiegel to state, quote, Commissioner... Uh, Commission President Ursula von der Leyen is once again facing uncomfortable questions about allegedly deleted text messages. An expert described the practices as legally questionable, end quote. Well, well yes, that's because it is. I wouldn't argue with that. Uh, even the European Parliament is unhappy with such shady dealings and has raised a parliamentary question headed, uh, quote, uh, von der Leyen's text messages with the CEO of Pfizer commission violation of the regulation on public access to documents, end quote. Uh, but I don't think she's got much to fear, though, if the pandemic has shown us one thing alone, it's that political elites, having given themselves emergency totalitarian power, can now do pretty much as they please. Uh, obviously, apart from the Hancockian groping of assistance, of course. Uh, von der Leyen has a certain amount of historical form when it comes to large amounts of money and disappearing data. Uh, when she was Germany's defence minister between 2013 to 19, she was involved in arms contracts with India, Turkey and Saudi Arabia, uh, all of which routinely build large backhanders into their costing equations when dealing with Western arms dealers. Uh, so not unsurprisingly, von der Leyen managed to land herself in hot water over uh, all sorts of financial irregularities. Uh, but when investigators confiscated two of her mobile phones as part of their inquiry, they found she had wiped them clean. Now, German MPs ruefully stated this might have destroyed the evidence. Uh, yes, that was, that, that was the point. And despite the huge sums of money involved in her time as Defence Minister, uh, she never managed to find any to fund things that really needed to be funded. Uh, which resulted in the German army term, uh, turning up on NATO exercises uh, with Dad's army broomsticks uh, rather than Schmeiser S60s. And her career to date has been described as uh, catastrophic mismanagement and a failure to deliver, uh, all encompassed amidst a litany of financial irregularities. Uh, but it all worked out OK in the end, though, as our uh, these dodgy attributes uh, eminently qualified her for her new job as President of the European Commission. 
And it gets worse. In December 2020, her husband Heiko von der Leyen uh, became medical director of a firm called Ongenesis, uh, which specialises in gene and cell therapy for the medical industry. Well, well, there's a thing. And then in May 2020, Reuters announced that Orgenesis was gearing up to produce a COVID-19 vaccine, uh, which is interesting for two reasons. The first, obviously, uh, is that our Ursula's hubby just happens to work there. And the second is that COVID-19 vaccines are clearly set to remain in uh, mass production for a very long time to come. Now, I don't know how this will affect uh, our Ursula's relationship with Pfizer CEO Albert Bourla, considering that uh, hubby Heiko is now very much Herr Bourla's competition in the vaccine market. Uh, but for now, though, all is rosy. Uh, here's Ursula and Prince Albert of Pfizer at a nauseatingly self-congratulatory vaccine manufacturer's jamboree recently. Don't they look happy? I'm sure they are. I'm sure they are very happy indeed. And the other day, good old Prince Albert of Pfizer suggested those who, who uh, had the temerity to question the COVID vaccine rollout were nothing less than criminals, uh, which is a bit rich considering the fact that between the years uh, 2000 to today, Pfizer has been fined over 2 billion euros uh, for all sorts of unsavoury antics to do with bribes, lies and uh, all the other sort of typical examples of criminal jiggery pokery uh, Big Pharma seems to engage in all of the time. We shouldn't be too surprised though, the top dogs of all international drug cartels are hardly the sort of people you would entrust your daughter to. Ah, but isn't that exactly what our Ursula would like to force us to do? It's all completely unbelievable, isn't it? I mean, dodgy politicians, huge sums of money negotiated and paid out based on unrecorded private WhatsApp messages, uh, dodgy big pharma cartels, utterly disinterested journalists. You know, how much money has big media been paid, one wonders, and all leading to where we are today, compulsory vaccinations uh, promoted by an untrustworthy EU president uh, with both an unusually close relationship with Prince Albert of Pfizer and a husband uh, in on the future financial action to boot. Now, where are the investigations over this? Where are the journalists? It really is beyond belief that they have no interest uh, in exposing the shysters, the fascists, crooks, charlatans and gangsters who now hold full totalitarian power over us, uh, who are now in control of our very lives and the lives of our children. I mean, seriously, how can you possibly trust any of them? They are all completely untrustworthy, and that is putting it mildly. You know, anyone unable to see this glaring reality is suffering from some form of derangement. Blimey. You know, it only seems like yesterday we were told it's just three weeks to flatten the curve. So what's it going to be like in 2023 or 2024 or 2025? You know, surely, surely you must realise by now that this is never going to stop. Surely you must. <laughs>